If you clicked on this video, you probably have at least once in your life searched on Google how to play an audio file in PED. If so, and especially if you're a beginner, you found that there's quite a confusion on this topic. That's because there are many methods and none of them is as intuitive as it should be, because I just want to play an audio file. So in today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create your own audio file player with the standard controls for start, stop and loop. That being said, let's play the intro. The first thing I want to do is to open an audio file. So I'm going to use an open panel, which opens uh, my computer browser when it receives a bang. And we can apply a print so that we can visualize uh, in the console what is happening. So bang, here uh, the folder where I have a bunch of grooves. Let me select this one. And here the console says print symbol my directory and finally the audio file name rio group.wav. From this point, we can use read sf tilde, which reads an audio file depending on its directory. So we can send a message with keyword open and the name of the, the directory where the file is saved. And I'm going to set that directory with a dollar sign variable. So each time I open my panel, I send the directory symbol inside this open message that is sent inside the read sf. Now we can send the read sf to a multiplication node with control over the gain. So we can use this slider, normalize its values <clears throat> between 0 and 1 and finally send it straight to the DAC. At this point we can use two messages 1 and 0 to play and stop the audio file. So the audio file is loaded but I need to reload it since I want to trigger my SF read. Great. Now I bring up the volume and I play the audio file. What if I want to restart my audio file? I press once again my message 1 and this error appears. Read as f start requested with no prior open. What it means is that we asked read as f to read a file that he no longer holds inside it. So when we want to re-trigger the read as f, we need to send an open message once again with the exact directory of that file. So what we need to do now is to store inside an object the directory name. So we can use a symbol object that simply uh, store a symbol. We can send the output of open panel. We can get rid of our print. So inside symbol, each time we open an audio file, we store the actual directory. Then symbol is linked to the open message. And now we can generate a bang, which is connected to a trigger node. So trigger bang bang. We want to first bang our symbol. So when we play the audio file, I want to trigger the symbol so it sends the directory uh, file path to the open message, then the trigger is going to trigger our one message that is linked to the read sf. Same process for our uh, stop message. So the stop sends a bang first to the symbol, then the message zero is sent to the read sf. So let's open a different audio file, something like this one, play, stop. 
play. Stop. It would be nice to visualize the actual directory each time I open an audio file. So instead of using print, I'm going to use make file name with the percentage symbol and an S, which stands for symbol. So each time we open our audio file, we generate the uh, directory as a string and we print it after a name, which is directory. So let me clear the console, open an audio file. And here we have our directory with the uh, file path. Super cool. Now to make things easier to use, we can change the color of the bang. So play, it's going to be green. Stop, it's going to be red. And the open uh, panel bang, maybe gray. Okay. One more feature I want to add is the looping. So out of the second outlet of read SF, we receive a bang each time the audio file finishes. So we can use that bang to re-trigger the audio file when loop is enabled. So we can use a spy god, which essentially is a gate that is open when it receives one and it's closed when receives zero. So we can connect it to a toggle. And out of the spy god, we can send loop play that is received on top here. So receive loop play. We can send it to the trigger. We can rename this toggle loop. And now let's have a listen. Great, now I want to convert this patch into an abstraction. So we are going to add uh, an outlet tilde for our audio. We can disconnect it. We can get rid of the section. The outlet it's sent to uh, the read SF, it's sent into the outlet. We right click in a blank space, properties, graph on parent, we can increase the size of this window, something like 200, maybe 200 it's too much, 120 and 80. Okay, if you're not used to abstractions, they are really simple, they essentially are a patch saved and inside your computer with a specific name, that you can easily recall inside an object uh, typing that exact name. So let's say that I saved uh, a patch, an abstraction that is called sound codex. If I type sound codex inside this object, it will generate that patch. And if graph on parent is turned on, I will visualize inside that box all the elements that are inside that graph and parent. Now in this example, I did not create a sound codex abstraction. So uh, in the console here, I see couldn't create because there's no abstraction named like this. We can drag first our open panel bank. We can rename it open then we can use the play and we can rename it as well. So play, then we can use stop. And finally our loop. When you place your objects inside the graph on parent, make sure that you leave some room, some space from the top because on top here, PD will write the abstraction name. So I can lower everything. 
maybe a loop can stay here. Now I can simply save my patch and I'm going to rename it um, something very simple like SF play um, one because it's mono. If you want to generate a stereo audio file player, you simply specify the number of channel inside read SF. And in that case, you can save uh, a different abstraction that is SF Play 2 or SF Play Stereo. Now I'm going to save it inside my abstraction folder. Save. Now I open a new project. And if I type SF Play 1, here we have our new abstraction. We can link it to a multiplication, then a DAC. We can open. That's all for today's tutorial. Hopefully this video was helpful for you, if so I really invite you to give a like and subscribe to support this series. If you want, write a comment in the comment section down below and tell me what you think about this audio file player and if there are any extra features that I should implement next. Here on the fly, I'm thinking about a built-in algorithm for time shifting or pitch shifting or a display where we can visualize the audio waveform. This would be uh, really cool and I think that I'm going to make a future video about it. As always, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.